What's up, guys? It's Dan. Uh, I got some feedback that you guys didn't like the last video I posted of how to beat the sunken crew. So now that I have editing tools, I wanted to go back and revisit it for you all. So what you see in front of you is the same video I had posted before, but I wanted to go through and kind of talk about the strategies, um, the crew itself, and what the fight looks like, and you know the strategy that you see here versus the strategy that you might want to use a couple different schools of thought on, on how to do this boss. So first we'll talk a little bit about the sunken crew and what they are. So they're an unholy mob. So to a partial extent, the crusader performs really well here. And to a lesser extent, the Vestal performs well here as well. So maybe a little bit better than my occultist that I brought. But um, we'll talk about that party in a few, few minutes. But the basic concept of the fight is the Anchorman who pops up in front here is summoned by the crew. The Anchorman drags somebody to the front of the party. And then that person basically is going to be locked in position one. And they're going to incur stress damage. Um, and whereas that person can attack, uh, the really the focus of the, the strategy you'll see that I employ here is that I focus on marking the Anchorman and then eliminating him uh, by focus and elimination of prot because when the anchor man comes up what you'll find is as he comes up in the front he's going to pull somebody to the front but he has protection now once that person is immobilized um, the buff to protection that he gets shifts to the crew so that's something a lot of people don't realize sometimes until halfway through the fight but that's something that can definitely help you if you know when it's going to transition then you know kind of a little bit better of how to prepare for it and what that looks like um, so as you'll see here, my strategy is primarily utilizing the Bounty Hunter and the Houndmaster for the Houndmaster to mark and the Bounty Hunter to hit. So if you look at the trinket selection that I've picked there, um, most of my trinkets are dodge and speed, which benefits you very, very nicely here. Um, you can actually avoid getting the pool, which is truly a debuff, but the um, you can avoid getting that pool and that really messes up the um the flow for the the boss here the crew so if you dodge it it almost gives you an additional turn um now you don't really need the bleed resist that i just popped there it's not as much of an issue you don't have to bring the holy water but i do feel it's valuable if you guys are wondering and also of course like i recommend in all my videos camp the room before if you can help it which gives you a good footing and a good foothold for when you begin to move into the boss fight gives you slight advantage with some of the buffs so you'll see the strategy that i employ um, come into play um, when the hound ma or the man at arms rather in, in slot two there when he gets shuffled to the front i'm not using him as much for um, his buffs i'm using him offensively and my focus when there isn't an anchor man is to do as much dps as possible to the sunken crew now whereas they're not completely immune to bleeds and blights um, I'm not really using that strategy here. This strategy is primarily to focus down the anchor man and get the crew to the front and really focus and DPS down as much as I can. I'm not healing until my party really gets below 50% because they really don't do a ton of damage. The main problem with um, the crew is because of their bleeds and the stress that they can do, um, they really can just annoy you to death. But this fight can be very, very long and dodge and, and prot reduction are really what I would recommend. But stun actually also plays really well. Um, you can see here, the Anchorman only has about 70% stun in this particular fight. Depending on you know what level of dungeon, it'll have different resists, of course. But that makes it a little more manageable if you're able to stun them, which will give you another turn. Another strategy that I've seen work before, and I don't know, it might be patched soon if you guys haven't seen it, but... Um, something that I think would be really good is if you have someone who's really fast with a pull, what they're able to do, you can see there I, I miss getting pulled to the front because I dodged, but if you have somebody very, very fast who has a lot of speed, they can actually pull the crew to the front, which puts this anchor man to the rear, and then he can't really do anything for the rest of the fight. Now, I expect that to be patched, but... Um, for now, if you have somebody with really, really, I mean, you'd have to buff his move ability um, with trinkets um, to help you do that. But it's somebody that could 
really make this fight very, very easy. But as you can see, I'm dodging a lot of attacks, which is really helpful. And dodge and speed, if you guys haven't seen any of my other videos, really make a lot of the fights much more manageable. You'll see the uh, fight begin to change a little bit where I can focus on elimination of the crew rather than the anchor man. So in these next couple turns, you'll see me just strictly focus full out DPS um, away from the anchor man and switch to the crew. I probably could have done it this turn, but uh, I didn't. That was actually a mistake. But going back and looking at some of my footage, sometimes I'm able to, to take those takeaways. But in a lot of your boss fights, once you, you're down to where your next three turns you think you can kill the boss, go away from the other mobs and just purely DPS focus down the boss. So you'll see here that we're able to take out the crew. Hopefully this is what you guys are looking for. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.